Well, if you're a frustrated Windows Phone user or just like Windows 10 tiles, here's a way to make your Android look like a Windows Phone. And it's not that hard to make this into this. Not only does it look just like the Windows Phone, but it functions exactly like it as well. So today I'm going to talk about how tiles work, just like they do on Windows 10, how to get an app, and how to configure it. No matter what home screen manager you have now, all you have to do is go to the Google Play Store. Now, once you get there, all you have to do is search for Windows 10 or Tiles, and you'll eventually find something. In fact, you'll find a lot of tile programs. The one I chose is called Launcher 10, and there's several you can choose. But once I downloaded it and installed it and tested it, I realized it had all the features of my 950XL Windows Phone and much, much more. And I'm not talking about the app difference, I'm talking about the interface, how it mimics the Windows system, yet gives you much more functionality besides. Just like any other program, once you install it, it gives you a button to run it. When you launch it, you'll see some sort of initial screen. My system was set up to have the Bing wallpaper in the background, and it set up some initial apps to start with. If you're like most of the world and you're not familiar with the Windows 10 mobile interface, managing the start menu is just like the Windows 10 start menu, except you're using your mouse on your phone. So either this time or maybe after you reboot your phone sometime, the launcher doesn't come up by default because you have to make it default for your home screen. So we're going to go up here to the gear icon and click on it and get into the settings. The easiest way to do it is just click on the search icon in, uh, when you're in settings at the top and type in home for home screen and there you see it up there under apps default and once you click on that and it refreshes you just come down here to home screen you see mine was set for microsoft launcher as you can see well you just click on that and you choose launcher 10 as your default now that it's default you may have to go in and invoke it one time just to get it started so you just go out to your recent apps and you find it and click on it and boom up it comes. Now again, this is mine already configured one. You're going to have that earlier screen and you can get started doing that. So let's take a look at how to configure this thing. So if you're not familiar with Windows Phone, its app listing is exactly opposite the desktop. Instead, you swipe left to get to a list of all the installed programs. So then to install, I just press and hold and I get a pop-up menu. Let me uh, find something to install here. I'll, I'll do my thermostat that I have installed in my house. I'm going to pin that to start. It immediately gets installed down here near the bottom of the menu. And just like any Android tile, I can press and hold it, which allows me to move this around anywhere I want. So I can move anywhere on this page, but unlike Windows Phone, which only has one page, you want an Android now, which means you have several. So all we have to do is take that, drag it to the left a little bit, and boom, we're on the other page. I can leave it here, but you'll see there's two little buttons. One's the unpin, take it away, and the other one you press, and you'll get another menu that will allow you to edit the appearance of the icon. So I move back to my main screen so we can take a look at it. I'm going to resize something. I want to rearrange this. Now it's a little complicated because things shift around. If I press and hold, you'll see that I can hold it, comes up, and I can drag things around. Let's, uh, let's do the contact icon up here. So I drag it around, and the Windows interface, just like it does on Windows 10, moves around until I think I know where I want it. But then I have to do some other stuff as well. So that I have it in this preliminary position now. So I'm going to press on those little three dots to bring up the menu. And I'm going to click on Edit to go into the Configuration Editor. Now the first thing you will see is the icon itself in a preview mode. Uh, and you'll see these height and width controls. So if I press on those, I can change the height and width of this tile to whatever I want. Unlike Windows or Windows Phone, where you only had a couple selections. I can make this skinny, wide, whatever I want. So once I have it set to what I think I want, uh, we can go on. Uh, I'm going to click on this little box that says hide live tile so it's not distracting. And let's go down to where it says label. Now you'll notice it's already pre-filled with whatever it came with, but you can change this to whatever you want. My contacts, who contact, I don't care. Whatever you want to have as your label. Now the label color is actually the color of the text, not of the box. So if you change it to something else, 
you got to pay attention to what the background's going to be. So if you do white on white, you won't be able to see it. So you may want to slide down a little bit in this interface to where you get to the color of the background uh, so you can see how the text looks with that particular background. So if I look here, I'm going to have white on blue or white on orange in this case. If we go back up a little bit, you'll see that there's alternate icons you can select. Okay, or you can browse for more, but normally you would just select one of these icons first to see which one you want to use. Now I'm going to leave it with a default icon, but once you've decided on that icon, the next thing you want to do is look at the icon size. So if we go here, you can see here where there's different sizes available, and just click on that. If you watch carefully up top, uh, that'll change and actually show you the preview of what it's going to look like. In this particular case where I'm going to leave the live tile operating, uh, this is not going to show up. Now, I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm going to set it back to my settings. And by the way, if you look at the bottom, there's an apply button. None of these are permanent until you hit apply. Uh, but I'm changing everything back so I uh, get the same interface I used to have. But wait, there's more features. If we scroll even further down past all that, you'll notice that we have a background transparency. And we can use this slider here, take it off the default, and it'll make your tile as transparent or opaque as you want. So at first, I'm going to leave it like that. And if we go down one more, we're going to take this off of default settings down here for tiles and show notifications. You can turn that on or off. Uh, you can also show other items as well, like a clock that alternates with your display. Even your default photo directories can be used. Uh, and then if you just scroll down here and choose which ones you want, show the gallery live tile. So now that I'm done playing with all of these, I decided I'm going to go ahead and hit click on Apply to activate uh, these options. And when I do that, you'll see that the transparency effect that I chose is much in play here. If you don't like it, uh, that's okay. You can just go right back into the edit mode uh, and go back into the transparency setting and scroll down to there and slide it back to where you find a transparency that you're uh, comfortable with or that you think looks good on your device. So let's go ahead and do that, and then hit apply, and we'll go back and take a look. That's a little more opaque. By the way, I should mention, if you're in this edit mode, all you got to do is tap on another icon, and you don't even leave the edit. You just go in here and start making the changes for the other icon. So in this one, I went in and I turned on the calendar and clock live tile, so I can see two different things in the same tile. So you'll see here in the preview above, and when I click on apply, and go back to the main screen, and not only do I see the calendar stuff, but you'll see that every few seconds, you'll see the time alternate. So it should come up here, and yep, there it is. It's important to note that besides pinning tiles from the app menu on the right-hand side, some apps require that you add them as a widget in order to get the live tile functionality. So while you're in edit mode, you'll see there's an add widget button at the bottom bar, you simply press on that, and you see a list of a bunch of widgets which have different functions. Now, there's all sorts of ones in here. Uh, I can't cover each of them. There's a clock, so there's things like that. But one of the ones I like is the individual contact. You can pin an exact contact uh, to your start screen. So you would just play around with those until you find the one you want. Uh, right now, I'm going to go show you how to pin an, uh, an email address to your start screen. So we scroll down till we see uh, email shortcut. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click on that icon one. And it's going to go into your email. So it'll bring up a screen. And if you have more than one, you just choose the one you want. And then at the bottom, uh, you just say add shortcut. And you'll end up with a tile with your account name on it. And uh, you can change that if you want, if you don't want your account name showing, by simply going back to the tile setup. So we click on the little three dots and go to edit again. And then we go into the screen where you remember uh, there's a place for your title. You simply uh, click on the label area and you do whatever changes you want. Type in whatever you want here. I'm just going to go ahead and put Gmail in here. And once you're done with that, you're probably going to want to uh, make this icon look a little differently. So we're going to go into those controls that we talked about. Just click anywhere outside of the keyboard up top there uh, to get rid of it. And let's go ahead and change the icon. Uh, I'm going to choose the normal Gmail icon because it's a Gmail account. So if I go over here and I click on, uh, let's do the background first. 
and I'll change the icon over here to Gmail, or what's somewhat similar to that. And I'm going to change the size of it. Uh, and by the way, you can browse for other ones here. I'm going to actually look at the actual Gmail icon, which is up here in the third row. That's uh, the white icon. And then I change the size of it to one that I, fills the space better. Now, once you have that, you have it the way you want. Uh, let's change the background color so it can stand out. Maybe you want your Gmail to be your, catch your focus right away when you look at the screen. So you want to change the colors. Uh, don't do white on white because that doesn't help. But let's change it to one of these other colors down here. Uh, maybe orange or a putrid orange like this one. Then once we have that set, we'll scroll down. And now we're going to change the background transparency like we did. Uh, change it from default to something different, somewhere in between. Up to you. Live tiles, uh, change or leave the settings as you wish. Once you're done playing around with all your settings, you simply click on the apply button down at the lower right, and there's your new Gmail icon. And uh, we're going to move this up uh, somewhere else on the screen because I uh, mail something pretty important. I want to see it all the time. I'll put it right here up next to my Outlook icon. Uh, let me put it over here. And then I'm going to resize my Outlook uh, so it's the same size as the Gmail. So I'm going to go to Edit This Properties and go to Edit up there and change this one size to a square as well by reducing that 4 uh, down to a 2. And now it's a square. And I'm going to click on Apply here. And now I have it. Same size. Now I can move them around in the same row and they're next to each other. So now that we've done a couple examples of uh, creating uh, tiles, let's go look at launchers overall preferences. So now that we looked at apps and widgets, uh, here's how to pin a website uh, to the home screen. We're going to do that. Here's my website. We're going to take a look at it. I'm going to click on the three dots down there, and there's a in the middle, there's a link that says Add to Home Screen. Now it immediately gives you a prompt where you can go ahead and they put the name of it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, do that. I'm going to cut out all this other stuff and just put down old guy geek uh, if I can type and then I'm going to say add and now it comes up with the launcher 10 interface so you want to pin a tile so you say okay so let's go back to the home screen and sure enough uh, there's the tile so I'm going to go right back into it and edit it a little bit uh, to make it look like I want to the same editor, and you know what? I'm just going to give it uh, my face. Uh, I'm giving myself a big head uh, right there and say fit. There it is. Uh, now I'm going to drag it to the other side, the other screen, put it up in its place, and there we have it uh, pinned a website to the screen. Now I usually have a couple of my most visited sites here on the home page, uh, but you can build a whole page of your most visited sites, so it's a lot easier to use those than using the favorites in your browser. Just some information for those of us that were used to be on Windows Phone. Believe it or not, you had some apps that were better than Android apps. For one, Outlook. The Outlook mobile for Android is nothing like the one for a Windows Phone. It doesn't uh, have as many features. It doesn't have a dark mode as of this writing. So um, be aware of that. Another example is the Windows calculator. It has built-in calculator with all the different kinds of calculators. You're going to have to go and download a different calculator to get the kind of functionality you already had with the Windows Phone version. Okay, back to Launcher 10. You can do that by scrolling to the bottom. There should be a Preferences tile down here. You click on that and you get to the Master Settings. There are a ton, so let's start with General. So you can sit there and tell it to scroll the wallpaper horizontally, vertically. So that's your background wallpaper. The next option is how it allows your screen to rotate. I usually have this at portrait only. You can allow it to rotate or even rotate and resize. And here's a screenshot from my phone showing it uh, in horizontal mode and the uh, tiles automatically resize to the width of the screen. The next option is your app shortcut menu, how to, how to actually interact with it so you can add tiles and that stuff. And you see here that tile options button, which is the one I showed you at the bottom. Or you can do a long press to get into edit mode. Now the navigation bar is that bar at the bottom of your phone that lets you uh, choose uh, your home screen or all apps. Uh, you can change the background and color 
and or transparency. Let's go down here to the overall transparency. And there's a slider there for that. There's again the status bar uh, transparency as well. There's also an option to load more icons. I haven't investigated this, but I'm guessing you can uh, download more icons. And the only choice here right now is default. Going head back to the menu, uh, we go down here to theme and colors. You can set your overall theme color background, uh, dark or light. Uh, you can choose your background picture, the uh, full screen or tile it, uh, all sorts of things, transparency. I'm not going to cover each and every one here. Just go in here and play around with these and see uh, what you like and how you want your system to look. The next section is your overall start screen options. You can go in here and you can have, unlike the Windows Phone where you only had the one screen, you just like Android, you can have up to 10 different screens you can slide over to and install stuff. Uh, and all these other ones as far as margin, you know, the apps button, the number of tile columns, all that stuff. Again, play in here to your heart's content. I do want to point out that once you have bought live tiles, you have all these options about how many notifications to show, small tile notification, badge counts, all that. So you can go in here and uh, do that. Now the next thing is your all apps page, the one that you slide to the left and it shows all the list of your apps. And you can have the size of it. And what's really nice is you can hide it so you don't have to have everything in that apps list. This way you have programs that only occasionally use and you don't want them on your start screen. You don't have to scroll through an extremely long list of apps here. Going back to the main options, uh, the next section down is animation. And if you look while you're editing the tiles move around a little bit, that's the animation. One of the animations we're talking about. Uh, you may want to turn this off if you have a, maybe an older phone that doesn't have as much power or speed. The next section shows the status. If you have bought live tiles like I uh, have, it will show that. If not, it will show you how you can do that. Uh, you can make a donation as well. But let's go down to the backup, which is a really great feature. As soon as you click on it, it automatically saves a backup to your system, to your phone itself. And then when you click on Browse for Restore, there's a list of any backups you've done. So if you've made a change and you want to revert, it's very simple to do this. I even uninstalled my launcher and then went ahead and reinstalled it and brought back the backup so that my screen looked exactly the same. So there you have it, how to use Launcher 10 to make your Android phone use tiles. It has some great features, easy to read, especially for older people. Uh, so something you may want to consider. And by all means, check out some of the other great tiling apps in the Google Play Store. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video. And if you want to get more, just subscribe to Old Guy Geek. You can also follow me at Facebook or Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video.